What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle for the next episode of Dying Light. I'm happy to have you here today, and I am happy to play the role of your host as we dive into the zombie apocalypse of Haran. It's not like a global apocalypse, it's sort of like isolated to maybe like this, I don't know if this is supposed to be like a piece of turkey, or whether this is, but I'm making myself hungry right now, I love turkey. Uh, both the country and also the food. I have several Turkish fans, as far as I know from looking at my analytics. Good job out there, 31. Uh I mean crane, right? Ooh, I've earned a name. See, we're not in that Vietnam mode anymore where we're the new guy, where everybody just ignores us. Anybody want a free plastic? This thing looks really, really scratched. What did you just, like, take it and rub it against a wall? for? Maybe it's just old. Maybe it's just old. It looks like it's of, like, very, very nice construction. They don't make good toys anymore. That's one thing that I've noticed. As my friends have started to have kids, like, you're just, like, up at their house and their kids' toys will be laying around. Toys suck nowadays. I mean, they don't make anything out of, like, die cast. They don't die cast anything anymore. Like, the plastic feels kind of cheap and flimsy. What's going on in here? Got yourself your own little, like, alchemical workshop, huh? I can respect that. I can respect that. You guys got anything that I can borrow by any chance? Yes? No? What if I beg? Can I beg or borrow? Can I beg, steal or borrow? If I steal, I feel like you're going to beat me to death with your glasses. Let's go over here. Like, they're especially dense for extra protection. Crane. Listen. Brecken and a team of runners went after an airdrop last night. He lost the rest of his team to biters, and then Rise's men ambushed him, beat him to a pulp, and stole the drop. Now Brecken wants to go after the next drop himself, but we can't let him, and you've got to back me up, okay? For God's sake! You can't even walk straight! We need you alive, you idiot! Okay, we're going in. Act confident. Brecken? Lena? Maybe you can get through to him. Jade, who's your friend? Kyle Crane. Look, Brecken, the last thing we need is for you to go back out there. We can figure out another way without jeopardizing you. Right, Crane? I'll go. I'll do it. Right. Yes. Crane will go. He'll be happy to. Jesus. No offense, friend, but you're as green as grass. You can't just- Crane will manage. He'll start in the right spot. And Lena's right. You need to be here taking care of the towers, convincing them the world's not over yet. Oh, hell. Maybe one more try before we go to Rice. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good luck, Crane. Jade, a moment. Sure. Head for the cauldron. I'll be in touch shortly. Doc, there's something else we need to discuss. Brecken was hurt pretty bad out there. Worse than he wants people to know. He took a blow to the head. Now he's starting to have seizures, and I don't have any Lora tracks. Yeah, I doubt anyone does. Anti-seizure drugs were being passed out like candy when the infection first started. And the stores ran out weeks ago. Yes, that's right. How do you know that? Look, what do you need me to do, Lena? There's a man in town named Ghazi. He's not altogether there, if you know what I mean. His mother had epilepsy, so he used to pick up medicine for her each month. She died two years ago. But Ghazi kept going to the store to pick up her prescription. He likes his routine, and Ghazi can be very... insistent. So, they kept giving it to him. You think he's been stockpiling it all this time? If he hasn't, I don't know where else we're going to get it from. Ghazi lives under the overpass. And don't mention his mother's death. He won't understand. What's inside that canteen labeled first aid on your outfit right there? It's chicken noodle soup, isn't it? I bet it is. That's how you fix the afflictions of the soul right there. Afflictions of the soul. There is nothing that chicken noodle soup can't fix. Wow, there are a lot of exclamation points around here. That means that there are probably a number of people who are interested in talking at us. So let's get talked at. Daoud must still have a lot of things in that pawn shop of his. Yeah, probably a bit of everything, really. I sure could use some of that stuff now. Yeah, his pawn shop actually does not. I did this quest in the prologue, or in the preview, the press preview, and like, 
There wasn't much in there. Considering the amount of legwork you had to do just to get that quest done, the stuff inside the pawn shop was actually pretty disappointing. I don't know if they neutered it for the press demo. Bayer, is that you? What's going on over here, gentlemen? I feel like there's a lynch mob about to take place. People standing around with pipes and weapons and knee pads. Huge belts. What's going on here? Bayer's locked himself in the room. We could hear him screaming. He may have turned. You hear that? I can't get this lock. You want to try it? I think that you don't even need to pick the lock on this one. As I recall, you just like walk up and you open it. Oh, never mind. Maybe we do have to pick it. Alright, let's get this thing going. Well, I'm on a, I always check the left first. Is that odd? Like, I always check the left first. It's not going to be on the left, though. It's going to be on the right. A little bit further. There it is. Nailed it. Inside the building we go to possibly get gnawed on by a zombie. But here, you in here? Help me! Tell me what's wrong. I can't move. My chest feels like it's going to explode. Are you turning? No, no. I took antizin and the pain started. Ugh. The vial is on the floor. What you took is junk. What? It's fake. Where did you get this from, Bahir? Please, I need a doctor. First, tell me who sold you that. I can't, I promised. This guy is very useful. He, he brings me things from the outside. Yeah, like phony antizin? People could be giving this to their kids. You want them to go through this? No! God, no! Then tell me who sold it to you. Yusuf. He's one of the scouts. He lives on the roof. Okay, I'll get Dr. Lena. Last thing I need is child zombies running around making me feel like a dick for being a pipe-wielding badass. I don't need that in my conscience. Not right now. My Jiminy Cricket doesn't need it. No. Look, he's not turning, but he needs a doctor. I thought he was turning. We should still keep an eye on him. If he needs a doctor, you should get the doctor. <laughs> this guy over here looks like he was dressed by Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> Going out to catch a bounty without an undershirt. Yeah! I've got to get out of here. I need to get my wife and kids somewhere safe. You know, it seems to me this is about the only safe place there is. <sighs> Safest place in the slums, maybe. But the slums aren't safe. It's no place for my family. And I found a way out. You mean out of the slums? I can't tell you the details. But I need to get across town, and I can't do it without a gun. If you'll get me one, I'll tell you about a place that hasn't been looted yet. I promise you won't regret it. Well, how do you know this place hasn't been looted? Because there's only one person that has access to this place, and you're looking at him. Bring me a gun, and the key is yours, as well as everything you find there. Alright, so after this point, guns are reasonably rare in this game. In general, you can't purchase them from most of the vendors that I've seen, but you do find them around every now and again. The places that I would search if I really, really, really wanted to find a gun, mostly police vans and police cars, and you can find those up on the overpass on the freeway, so if you're having trouble locating them, that's just where I would start personally. What's down here? Let's see. Oh, that's right. We had to go to sickbay. Let's go talk to Lena about the faulty junk that Bahir had. You better have a look at this. The lot number's wrong. Is this a fake? Someone on 21 took it, and now he can't even get off the floor. Aman, get down to 21 now. Where did he get it from? Yusuf. He's one of the scouts. Well, he can't be producing it here. Someone's supplying him. I'll have a talk with Yusuf. The sooner the better. Don't hurt him. Just talk to him. I like her first aid kit. It comes with like a fanny pack. It comes with chicken noodle soup in a can. It comes with a knife. A flashlight that's duct taped onto her shoulder. I assume that her kit probably incorporates biting and headbutting eventually if things get out of hand. I don't know, she seems like the kind of lady that could throw down. You can just look at her, you can tell. Like, you're a medic, but I feel like you do more damage than you fix. You should be like, Ugh, getting out there, like, kicking people in the throat and being like, yeah. You got your own theme song that probably involves a wah pedal. Like, wah -chick, wah -chick, wah -chick, wah -chick. That's my goal in life. I want to end up with a theme song that has wah pedal. That's pretty much it. That's what I'm going for. Just wah -chick, wah -chick. Hey, it's what's his name? 
our fisting friend. Anyways, let's go back over here. I don't want to get him too excited when I call him my friend. Yusuf? Welcome to Yusuf's Emporium. If it's hard to find, you need to find Yusuf. Whatever your needs, Yusuf has it all. Yeah, I'm looking for Antizen. Well, of course you are. My friend, this is your most lucky day. No, Yusuf, it's your lucky day. Because I'm going to give you a chance to come clean and tell me where you got that counterfeit junk you sold to Bahir. Bahir? Bahir, you say? Do I know this, Bahir? He nearly died from that phony Antizen you sold him. Phony? Are you sure? You're saying it's no good. I just bought ten vials from those guys. I paid good money. Which guys? Well, that's kind of a sensitive issue. Which guys, Yusuf? I'm running out of patience. There's a building next to the drugstore. A couple of survivors live there. I don't know how many. I've never been inside. They have medicines. Some of them are real. I guess from the drugstore. They also cook their own stuff. The guy I deal with is named Bento. All right, now you're going to burn the rest of those vials. But they cost me a lot of money. It'll cost you a lot more if I find you peddling that junk anymore. Dude, those track marks, though. On the inside of his arm, if you look, well, the texture's really, really close. When we were zoomed in, he's actually got, like, injection sites all over his arms. That's pretty metal. Kids, this is what happens when you inject marijuanas. This is what happens. Nope, just kidding. Just kidding. Because there's always going to be that guy that takes it seriously. I hate the fact that I have to follow it up with a just kidding. I really do. It makes me sad. Makes me really, really sad. Because in a lot of ways, it ruins the delivery. Ruins the delivery. Like a bad UPS guy. Which around here in my neighborhood... Honestly, just don't order things. I have things ships to I have things shipped to the next town over at my friend's house because we get stuff stolen off the porch like every day. Like if somebody leaves a package here, that thing's done. Like UPS left, I bought a PC online and they just left it on the porch. Like and I told them signature only and they just like left it on the porch. And you'd be like, "Oh my god." Luckily, I had been checking because I've been watching the tracking numbers, so I knew it was coming in that day, but seriously, like Everything is to like half the Christmas presents we ordered got stolen this year. It's just like, yep, I'm just having them shipped to my friend's house the next town over. It's fine. I'm tired of getting stuff stolen. All of it was insured though. That was what was pretty sweet about it is I got it all from Amazon and because like delivery wasn't completed, Amazon was just like, bam, and give me my money back. So that's Most pretty sweet. Didn't hurt my wallet at all, so that was nice. That I mean, even if it did, it's still just like the fact that somebody's like stealing off my porch. It just makes me sad. It makes me slightly upset. It fills me with emotions that I am not necessarily so predisposed to feeling. Unless I'm playing Neo Scavenger and I get one-shotted by a dog, man. Then I feel that feeling. I feel so many feels. What's going on over here? Did you restock? I hope you did, because I want to restock with all, like, epic weapon. Yeah, epic weapons. That's all. Ooh. That knife is actually pretty solid. So, in general, you don't want to use knives on zombies. Knives are more useful against humans. Like, if you're going to be fighting against survivors or other scavengers, the knife is pretty good. The only thing that you got to watch out for is the knife has no knockback. And so, when you hit somebody, you can't rely on the fact that they're going to stop their charge or they're going to stop attacking you. I should probably also buy some, like, premium throwing stars. How many can I get? Hell yeah, 10 throwing stars. When I was a kid, I had these rubber throwing stars, and you would throw them, but they would leave black marks on the wall. It actually, it made my mom really, really mad. But it was an awesome toy until one day I took them outside, and I was throwing them around. I had like six or seven of them, and then by the end of the first day, I had like three left. And then by the end of the second day, I was out of ninja stars made out of rubber. And at that point, my parents were just like, well, that's awesome, because they didn't want me to have that toy anyways, because it was marking up the walls and destroying the house. So there you go. Now that we've got weapons, we've got claw hammers, water pipes, short, anyways, as I was saying, the short, simple knife, we should also probably use, the ninja stars are going to be useful, there's a reason I bought those. Against human opponents, the ninja stars remain useful as well. That doesn't look like any claw hammer I've ever seen. The claw on the back end looks like it would chip, it looks kind of flimsy, I don't know. I wouldn't buy it at the hardware store, and that's coming straight from a roofer. I used to be a roofer, and roofers, we know stuff about claw hammers, namely how to use them, how to swing them. The upper body strength required in order to use the claw hammer all day. We know stuff about things. I should probably, like, find some upgrades. Let me use the bad ones first. And what I'd prefer to do... Get out of here. How do I tell if they're stunned or not? Is is that it right there? That's... is that's got, It's gotta be close, like, right? Does it give me any sort of animation or anything? Don't... Here, kick her in the head. There we go. That's how you do it. Is she down? Okay, she's finally down. That is a huge amount of damage to her torso. You remember back in the day they had those Jurassic Park toys? Well, this is going to go way back in the day for some people. Anyways, back in the day they had these Jurassic Park toys where it was like a Triceratops. But in order to make it more interesting to like 
I don't know, boys obsessed with violence or something, they made it so that you could battle damage the dinosaurs. And so the dinosaurs would actually have, like, chunks that you could remove. Like this zombie's chest right here, there'd be a plastic plate over the top that made it look normal, but if you pushed a button, it would, like, fall off, and they would have battle damage, so it would look like the T-Rex had been fighting with the Triceratops. To this day, Stegosaurus is still my jam. Favorite dinosaur, Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus is what it's all about. You don't mess with Stegosaurus. Stegosaurus got game. I feel like I should be able to grab that right now, but I'm not going to think about it anymore. Let's just go straight up the side of the building, get ourselves some agility points. I forgot to level up in the previous episode. Noob move, bruh. All right, so let's level up real fast. We've got, oh, one of each. Okay. We can either take backpacker, which gives us four new slots for weapon carrying, or we can take boosters, which allows us to essentially distill random stimulants out of the plants that we find. So, we can make stuff, it's just like you would get in Far Cry, they make us like hunt better, run better, jump better, see better, anything that you would really want, they can up your defense, they can do a bunch of like random stuff, they can be pretty useful if you remember to use them, I'm the kind of person that always forgets to use my consumables though, so, you know, there we go, much to my guild leaders, my raid leaders chagrin, I always forget my consumables, so there it is, I vouched for a guy one time, people might not know this, but I used to be a really, really hardcore raider in Rift, and I was a hardcore raider in WoW, but I was never, like, competitive. In Rift, I was actually in, like, the number two or number three guild in the world. We actually, on our first, on our last kill before I quit, and I ended up, like, giving up MMOs because I had, like, an addiction problem. Around the time I gave up MMOs, the last boss that we cleared, we finished it, like, six minutes after the Koreans did. Oh, we were so close. We were so close. But, yeah, I used to do, like, hardcore, like, raid progression back in the day. And so anyways, I used to forget my consumables, and that used to drive my raid leader up the wall. But they loved me because I would just offset it with comedy. We can go with slide, which makes us press C while we're running. We'll slide under objects. That's a really, really good one, in fact. And if you go into a zombie's legs, it'll wipe them out hella hard. Or you can go with grapple. Grapple's pretty good if you've got good reflexes. What grapple does is essentially allows you to counter blow a zombie's attack. So if a zombie comes at you, you've got like a very, very brief moment to hit alt or V or something like that. And then you push in a direction. And what you'll do is you'll deflect the zombie and throw them into other zombies. It can be useful if you have good reflexes. I have old man reflexes and carpal tunnel, so unfortunately it's not going to do anything for me. So we're just going to go with the slide. I'm going to go with more active stuff that I can control. Back we go. And then for our power level right here, we can either take sturdiness, so our body gets more athletic and we can absorb more damage and melee throw we can throw any melee weapon at enemies dealing massive damage i'm not a big fan of throwing my weapons like i would prefer to keep them in my hand i'm probably going to go for some kind of like two-handed berserker build in this game that's what i would prefer anyways let's go with sturdiness for right now i think a little bit of extra hp will probably help us out in the long run crane here report tower boss is named brecken and he's definitely not your man the other likely suspect is this warlord, basically. Local guy. Calls himself Rise. He's hoarding Antizen and then gouging the hell out of anybody who wants to buy some. I'm on a mission to get Antizen from the airdrop. If I don't succeed, they'll have to come up with something else. Acknowledged. Good job, Crane. You're doing well. Stay on task, and we'll be in touch. Be sure to call us immediately if and when you get that Antizen. Okay, so we're back on out to get antis, and what I, I wanted to, here, let me see right here, I wanted to swap into a different weapon, I love the way that knife looks, that knife looks so threatening, it's like one of those Japanese short blades, not necessarily like a wakazashi, but you know the one that like, Orokusaki has, I don't know if people will know this reference, so Orokusaki, and then, what was the other guy's name? Basically, it's Shredder and Master Splinter, back when they used to live in Japan together, but anyways, it looks like the knife that Shredder used in order to pin Splinter to the wall, in that episode. It was a Rokusaki. Oh, that's going to bother me now. It's a Rokusaki. And then there's... What was the other guy's name? Damn, that bothers me. That's going to irritate me until I remember. I'm going to have to look it up after this episode. I'm going to have to. Otherwise, it's going to sit in the back of my head. And I'm just going to be like, what was that guy's name? You can open some of these doors, by the way. Like, if you get down into some of these random apartments, occasionally you'll be able to unlock these doors. And they stay unlocked permanently so that you can, like, bust your way through if you really, really need to. Let's see here. I'm going to look for a landing spot before I do this because I don't want to, like, wound myself horrifically falling off the side of a building this early on in our adventure. Let's see. Let's free run our asses off right now. And so, oh, yeah, we got to go do an airdrop. That'll be fun. So airdrops are one of, this is basically an introductory quest to one of the mechanics you're going to be grappling with for the remainder of the game. And so the game randomly generates content by dropping airdrops just kind of like randomly about the map every now and again. You'll hear when they come in. You'll see the plane. You can see them fall from the sky. And it's basically a race. What? 
What's going on over here? Wait, what? Oh, wow. Oh, that was terrible. The ninja stars have a lot of drop off, but you can one shot zombies with them. So if you can get the headshot, if you can manage the cranial protuber or the cranial protuberance, you can definitely kill off the zombies. There's. You should also probably help random people out as you run through the city. You'll find things like this all over the place where it's just like a small random event. So sometimes it'll have people getting jumped by random thugs and brigands and things like that. But back to what I was mentioning before. You don't really seem as stressed as you sound right there. There's a bat in the middle. Hold on. That guy's got a bat in the middle of his floor and I want it. How do I get in there? Is there no way in there? Oh, don't tempt me like that. Don't do me like that. That's unfortunate. No, there's a bat in the middle of the floor. I wonder if it's attached to him some. I want it. How can I get into your house? Allow me inside, please. Wee! I think that's damaging my weapon. Yeah, it's damaging my weapon. I don't think that's... I wonder if you can you... The kicking is not working, so I don't think you can actually get in there. I want that bat, though. As you get further on into the game, I actually... Some of the two-handed weapons are really, really good because they give you a really wide sweeping strike. Go ahead. We found two more vials of that fake antazin. Brecken is boiling mad. Yeah, I'll bet. How's here? He's stable. But if we'd gotten to him ten minutes later, he wouldn't be. This stuff is lethal, Crane. Putting them out of business is your number one priority. All right, understood. Okay, so as I was saying, I'm trying to do better at like staying on the subject that I'm talking about. Just because I think that's a major pet peeve with a lot of people. It's what I get the most comments about, that I switch subjects too much and I never finish a thought. So here it is. The airdrops are kind of like this mechanic you're going to wrestle with for the rest of the game. An airdrop will come from the sky, you can see it drop, but so can the other faction. So it's a race between you and the other faction to see who can get there first. If you get there first, what you get is a backpack that you can deliver back to any supply guy. So you know those guys, the quartermasters, that give us stuff at the beginning of each day? Those are the guys that I'm talking about. If you return the airdrop to those guys, you end up getting yourself like a big, big fistful of survival XP. And since survival XP is actually fairly difficult to come by, it's a reasonably decent plan. Especially considering the fact that they stack. Oh shit. Yeah, it's possible that that noise might get me. Can I go into the sewers? Oh. Yeah, there's one of the virals right there. Two of them, in fact. Shit. Alright, let's get up on the roof. They're easier to fight from here, especially this early in the game. Ah. Alright, come on, come on, come on. Oh, there's three of them now? Oh, man. We're getting all kinds of negative attention here. They're easier to fight from the roof because they have to do a climbing animation to get to you. And in the throes of that climbing in Oh, shit. Ow. We're okay, so that's the wrong roof. I don't want that roof anymore. Let's get up here, and as they try and climb up after us, what we'll do is we'll clip them as they try and get up here. That way they take both fall damage, and they're forced to slow down when they try and get up here and attack us. If our stamina gets low, just kick them off the roof. Not even a big deal. See her head explode when she hit the ground. Usually, I think the way that the game has worked, when they rigged the models, the heads actually weigh more than the others and orient downwards. That's why you see so many zombies in this game just face planting randomly. They have better loot too, so make sure you loot them. But yeah, these guys are the special zombies. The first ones that you're going to run across, the runners. And they can do a lot of damage if they get the jump on you because they combo. Yeah, the first aid kits and the supply drops are definitely important. You do want to run a lot of them if you're trying to make both money and XP. I can't open that. Okay, then I'm not going to worry about it. Inside these buildings, let's see. We could use any cash that we could get from a register because we did just make a whole bunch of impulse purchases. However, the good thing aside from this is that we won't have to do it anymore in the future. We've got pretty good weaponry right now that should last a while, I hope. More electronics, okay. And let's go back in and over here. If you're wondering what that green thing is on the map, it's one of the booby traps that Spike had us activate. When you run past them, you can press V if you need like a little bit of clearance. So let's say it's the middle of the night and you're being chased by some of the more... Ooh, that guy's got a police baton. Hold on, hold on, hold on. These guys are a little bit tougher, but that police baton, in my experience, is a really, really good weapon. Additionally, there's a cop car right here that I'd like to get open because it might have a gun in the back. So our plan for right now is to deal with both... Oh, he dropped it. Okay, that's fine. Oh, he's getting at us. He's getting at us. He wants it. He wants it bad. And now he's on fire. Burned all his clothes off. No, never mind. It's a different one. 
I think there's a couple of these bigger zombies, though. God, they are just powering through my strikes right now. Oh, it's because my weapon's broke. All right. That makes a lot of sense, actually. Let me see if these tank stoppers can be useful at all. Oh, no, he bounced off the tank stopper, so it doesn't one-shot him. Interesting things to know for the future. There we go. His brain's finally done. Enough beatings finally took place. Some of the zombies don't seem to be affected by fire as well. That's another thing that I would note if you're going to be playing the game long term. They do, however, affect you when you get close to them. They have no problem setting you on fire, so be careful about it. It keeps you from getting in there and finishing them too, which is kind of a pain in the ass. I could really use this guy dying, like seriously. Damn, he's a tough bastard, but we got like 300 XP for it, even though we lost a whole bunch of health. What's inside this military bag? Nothing. Disappointing. Nothing inside the laptop case either, or whatever that is. Check the trunk real quick while we're here, because sometimes you can get alcohol out of the trunks. Chemicals right there. Go after some head strikes. Kick her off her feet real fast, and then finish the job. Oh, I didn't even need to do that last strike. Wasting that durability because reasons. And then also missing because hand-eye coordination is badsies. Off with her. We just cut her head off with a blunt object. Amazing. Amazing. They need to make better bras in Haran. That's the feeling that I'm getting right now. They seem to be of poor duration and of poor quality. Seem to be falling apart. Metal wires sticking through. I don't know. Everybody else, like, their bras all are broken. That's all I'm saying right now. Where did that weapon get dropped? Did it despawn? God, I hope not. It's got to be around here somewhere. Oh, if it despawned, that's a big problem for us. No, there it is. It's only a green one, but the police badons, in my experience, are actually pretty decent. Let's see here, 38 with 59 damage. It's got good durability, too, because it's actually a weapon that's meant for, like, smacking people in the face. We'll save it. We'll use it as a replacement weapon in just a minute. Let me lockpick this thing right here. You can be attacked while lockpicking, by the way, just in case, like, you know... You were questioning that particular mechanic. I always question my mechanic when I go to the store. Like, whenever I get my car worked on, I question the mechanic. It's a good practice. $142 and a pouch. I don't know why pouches are so valuable in this game, but they are. Like, really, really valuable. They're one of those items that it's only good for vendor fodder, but for whatever reason, they're all over the place and everybody wants them. I'll probably pop open a bunch of trunks in here. If you're trying to get the real good stuff, trunks are a great place to start looking. Not only is Trunks an awesome DBZ character, it's a fantastic loot storage device. Anyways, I'll see you on the next episode. My name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me here. For Dying Light, it is my pleasure and privilege to be able to cast the game for you here today. Just hang out, show it off a little bit. Does it count as casting if you're on the... Oh, look, a supply drop. This is exactly what I was talking about. I'll show it to you at the start of the next episode. Hi, do, everybody.